Can you guys see my screen? So hi, hi everyone. Uh, so I'm going to talk about an update on Kebishet on the authentication part. So earlier, if you were using Kebishet, you so the way to onboard Kebishet onto your app would be to have a thought.yaml present that ensures what kind of managers you have and what kind of people, like who are the maintainers who would have the access to release a package and so on. But the problem was like, if you are if you belong to thought station then the onboarding does not involve any other process because Shasheta, our bot has access to all of our projects but let's say if you are a foreign repository and you want to onboard kebishet you would basically have to invite Shasheta onto your repository and then we would have to manually accept it and then on after that Shasheta would have access to your repository and then only we can create automatic updates such as this for example which would come in with from the Sasheta bot and which your CI can then merge it. Now the problem in the process was like this is not scalable as more people start onboarding the app. It becomes a manual labor to on like accept Sasheta as a collaborator and also from an end user side you have to keep adding Sasheta as a collaborator which is not which is like a two step process for you because you have to install the app. At the same time you also have to onboard another user which does not represent the app authentication. So hence we launched an app which is called Kebehoot and like the after you install the app, the only step that you need to do is have a thought.yaml. For example, in this repo of mine, uh, example repo, I have a thought.yaml that says that, okay, use the version manager, use the update manager and so on. After that, I don't need to do anything else. I just have an issue that basically says, Kebishet update and then you will receive an update of a particular manner from Kebehoot as which is using the app authentication and you would see all of your dependencies updated and then your CI can merge it. So here if you notice the difference like here we are using the app authentication and the only step to install the app is basically install the app from GitHub marketplace. And that's it. Like you should have the thought.yaml present and then the app is ready to work. Now to implement this, we went over a couple of restructuring of our project. We started with using the app authentic. We started with adding a app authentication layer in our source management, which currently uses the app ID and the pen key to get a temporary token. And that is the token we use in our source management layer to basically interact with GitHub and on top of it we also use the same token to do source changes for example if you notice here like in the update itself you see that the app the update also uses the token to interact with the source changes like changing a bit file lock so that also uses the app token so you don't need to have Shasheta. Shasheta does not need to have access to your repo the only constraint that we have currently is that your app should be a public repo so that we can see it. But as a part of a future update that could also be given access via the app. And yeah, that's pretty much it. We have applied for a public app on the marketplace. It should take a while to get approved. And if anyone has any questions. Yep, just a comment on the uh, marketplace approval. It still says uh, pending. Sometimes uh, the GitHub people are not very fast, um, but we've filled in all the fields. So um, there will be a uh, free of charge open source plan. If you click through the app, you just uh, can use that plan. There's no cost associated with it. And uh, you just need to grant a few permissions. And um, Regarding these permissions, um, Sai, that is the only change that we need to do if we are talking about access to private repositories on is also a change on the source code required for that. So about that, so I think the only current component that we have that uses the Shishita token is fetching the thought.yaml so that we because we support public repos right now, we we just use like our Shishita token to download the thought.yaml. 
but i'm sure like after we if we really want to support private repositories it involves like a minor change to the source code which is fetching the the thought.yaml using the token also but yes that should be fairly okay, well, extensible um is there an issue uh, at least an open issue for the private repository access if not uh, would you create one yeah i will thanks cool any other questions Yes, one. Um, Kboot is um, uh, opening a PR. I mean, in for our, I saw one PR open in uh, MI, I think, uh, for dependencies update. And in this case, uh, we need to approve it. Or oh, it's yes. just, uh, it's, it's no more like, uh, I mean, at least for us, it's no more that someone will approve them for us. Another bot will approve them. We will oh, have to sorry. approve them, right? Yeah, so the, there has been two more updates which I forgot to mention. Uh, so right now we don't do atomic updates. We basically add all of the dependencies in one singular update as you saw in the screenshot I was showing you. So we have like, okay, if you have three dependencies, we do a singular update showing that, okay, these are the three dependencies in your current update. So that has made, that has make like making the make makes the cabhead workflow a little faster also because we just run pip and update once but uh yeah and i think there's one more pr that harshad has put in that allows like adding approval to all of these updates so it should once it goes in all of these atomic updates they should get auto auto approved so yeah i think it's there on the sefk tab b app the pr it's approved once it's merged and we create a new release of Zefkit app, all of these PRs should get auto approved. I think the Zefkit app application is pretty hard coded. So I think it was looking for a specific title of the pull request for a specific user yeah. who opened the pull request and then auto approved that thing. Uh, I mean, it's. Uh, it's um, source code operations, processes as code. It's not very configurable. Obviously, it's prone to change. Uh, it's, it's error prone uh, in the case of changes, but um, that's the easiest way to do it, I guess. It's all my fault. Sorry. Maybe we can introduce some auto approval label. Be traced. Well, oh, that's an idea. <laughs> Uh, actually, I would uh, like to have an slash approve comment, just as any human does. Uh, it would be clever to have uh, Safegate RV just slash approve, and that's it. I mean, now it's really setting or adding the approved label to the pull request, and therefore the rest of the workflows kick in. But yes, it, it would be nice if it if the bots behave just like our us humans. Cool. Any other questions? Um, maybe just a word on the deployment itself. It's still running on PSI infrastructure. It's still receiving webhooks via um, the ultrahook um, sidecar container or the deployment. And the only thing that changed is that the webhook is not sent by each repository or organization itself, but by the Kebehut application, which has a um, webhook configured for the events. Correct, Sai? No, we are already receiving webhooks since April. Like the only thing that has changed is yeah. the, the authentication part. We were not able to use the app's authentication to interact with these repos or source code changes. So that limited us only handling repositories inside ThoughtStation or EICOE, wherever like right. Shishita has access to. Now we can add other repositories, like if you want to add your repository, you can do it via the app. Right, correct. Thanks. Questions? Thanks, I.